the NBC studios in Burbank, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Tonight, Jay welcomes comedian Marion Kelly. It's Girls' Night Out, featuring the comedy of Marion Kelly. It's the Monday Battle of Challengers as new comic Marion Kelly matches wits with... It's A&E's An Evening at the Improv. Tonight, starring Marion Kelly. Life in the Fat Lane. With special appearances by Marion Kelly. It's Comedy on the Road, starring... Marion Kelly. Our next act, uh, this is her first time on the uh, MTV's Half Hour Comedy Hour. She's from Kansas City. Let's have a huge round of applause for Miss Marion Kelly, folks. A warm welcome from Marion Kelly, ladies and gentlemen. Marion Kelly! Marion Kelly! Let's welcome Marion Kelly! So please welcome Marion Kelly. <laughs> You doing good? Yeah! Me too. I've already had a good day. And I went into a petite sizes store and found something that fit. <laughs> Thank you. I found these earrings. What do you think? See you. <laughs> I had to lay down on the bed to get them on. See? <laughs> but I'm wearing them. <laughs> did have fun today, did a little mall shopping today. You know, if you go to the expensive cosmetics counters, they'll give you a facial for nothing. I mean, they don't call it a facial anymore. This cracks me up. It's a consultation one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> it's technical. Little girls who sell you makeup are medical professionals. They have on white coats that say EMT, emergency mascara technician. <laughs> they got me wearing a medical alert bracelet that says oily nose and chin. <laughs> In case I'm in an accident. <laughs> they even ask you stupid questions as if they're taking a medical history. She said, have you ever had a reaction to any cosmetics? I said, I had a seizure once when a gal charged me $35 for eyeshadow. <laughs> so, it's been a great week. I got to do a little visiting early in the week. I saw my great aunt. She's got an interesting job. She's a nun. I swear, she's 80 years old. She's been in a convent since she was 18. You might not think we had that much to talk about. <laughs> it was depressing how much we had in common. <laughs> Sexual revolution's almost over. I didn't fire a shot. <laughs> I had to go to the doctor, you know, get a regular checkup. He came right out and asked me, how long has it been since you lost your virginity? I said, well, which time? <laughs> you know, hey, there's got to be a statute of limitations on that. I figure seven years goes by, I get it back. I was going out with one guy real steady for a while. He dropped me for this tiny little thing of a girl. I don't know what she had that I don't have twice as much of. <laughs> of course, with all the diseases going around, the question you have to ask yourself is, do I want to risk illness or death for a little physical pleasure? <laughs> okay, yeah. I, uh... <laughs> problem with that. A lot of my friends think men are interested only in looks. I don't believe that. I think you give a man a choice, he'd prefer a woman with looks and brains. It's just easier sometimes to start with a Playboy bunny and teach her to read. <laughs> so, brothers are an interesting topic. I'm an expert. I got eight of them. Eight brothers. Eight's the exact number the American Kennel Club recognizes as a litter. I grew up in a house full of men. One thing I don't have is unrealistic expectations. <laughs> I, I, I've seen them in their natural habitat. Do you know the same guy that won't eat off a fork that's been dropped on the floor in a restaurant in his own home will take a sandwich in the bathroom with him? 
come back out and offer you half. <laughs> Well, I need to tell you a little bit about myself. I come from a small Catholic family. There's just the 10 of us. We're, we're not real ethnic. We're Irish on one side and German on the other. It's kind of like being a cockapoo. <laughs> Ugly but friendly. <laughs> well, we didn't get out much. <laughs> well, you can't even take 10 kids out in public. They have a name for that. What is that? Unlawful assembly. Yeah. <laughs> good growing up that way though. You learn to make your own entertainment in a family that size. We played games. We played pin the tail on the youngest. You played that. <laughs> Memories. We played a lot of bunk bed games. Did you play those? Bunk bed skydiving? Yeah. Yeah. Fly and leap into a pile of dirty clothes. It's good. You don't get much air speed, but boy, the ground rush is intense. <laughs> Makes it worth playing. <laughs> My brothers were good at making up games. They'd make one up I couldn't even play because I was too little. It, my brother Joe made one up called Gotcha Last. It's a big brother tag game. Gotcha, no, got you, gotcha last. Ha ha ha. I was only five. He could get me hysterical just by going, I'm going to touch you. I'd run screaming to my mother, Ma, Joe's going to touch me. <laughs> I never got even with him for making me look that stupid. <laughs> I didn't have to, God did it for me. <laughs> Joe's got kids now. <laughs> I was over at his house, a little five-year-old girl came barreling through there, Daddy, Edward's looking at me. <laughs> he turned to his son, he says, I'm gonna touch you. <laughs> One time my brother Greg was eating a cheeseburger and tater tot. Someone called him to the phone. Before he got up from the table, he counted his tater tots. <laughs> I thought, this is a golden opportunity to mess with him. <laughs> I took a big honking bite out of that cheeseburger. <laughs> when he came back, I said, you think you're pretty smart, don't you? He said, yeah. I said, you counted your tater tots, didn't you? He said, yeah. I said, did you weigh that cheeseburger? <laughs> he said, no, I spit on it. <laughs> See, brothers are born with that knowledge that that's how you lay claim to property. <laughs> Has to involve saliva. <laughs> Greg was eating a piece of cake once. I tried to get my fork in there, just steal one taste of it. <laughs> he spit on it. I said, that's a disgusting thing to do. My brother Mike was standing next to me. He goes, you don't know how to play this game. <laughs> he spit on it too. He says, there now, Greg won't eat it. <laughs> Everybody wins. <laughs> you know what? I'll tell you a true story. I'm like, this really happened. I took Buster to have his little um, puppy operation. And it was either the nurse's first day on the job or she was just born without a clue. <laughs> Some people are like that. Because I asked her, I said, I'm not familiar with this procedure. I've never had a dog fixed before. <laughs> Shoot, I never had one break before. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to keep the moment light, you know. <laughs> so I said, well, why don't you explain it to me? And she said, well, what do you want to know? <laughs> I want to know what you're going to do to my dog. Do you need a multiple choice question? <laughs> All righty, I'll give you one. Is it a vasectomy or a castration? She said, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> No one had ever asked her. She said, um, it's a vasectomy. I said, really? You mean you don't take anything out? And she said, oh, yes, we take the testicles out. <laughs> well, I thought, who am I to burst this woman's bubble? <laughs> she thinks she's a nurse. <laughs> so I let it go. But when I came back the next day to get my dog, the doctor was there. He handed me the puppy. He said, do you have any questions? I said, no. <laughs> I have some advice for you. <laughs> if you ever decide to have a vasectomy, don't let her make the appointment for you. my mom last weekend. I did something at her house that I, I read in a psychology magazine. Everybody does within five minutes of walking in their folks' house. You know what it is? Right. Open the fridge. That's it. <laughs> you ever look in your mother's fridge and get reminded of some of the reasons why you left home? <laughs> yeah. 
Some cheeses do improve with age. Velveeta's not one of them. She won't throw anything out. She's got jelly jars in there with one spoonful left in the bottom. Been there since the dawn of time. Like there's a real chance someone will get a craving in the middle of the night for rancid jelly, and she's ready. I thought I was doing mom a favor. I threw out a half a dozen of those things. Next morning, I opened the fridge. There's another one of those jelly jars. She's buying them that way someplace. <laughs> My doctor asked me, he says, you're over 30 now. Do you hear that biological clock ticking? I said, I've never heard that sound. I don't think I have a biological clock. He said, oh, all women have a biological clock. I said, well, I guess mine's digital. <laughs> never heard it. I had to buy a bottle of this PMS Midol. <laughs> I'm okay now. But I am not making this up. My doll now comes equipped with a safety cap. <laughs> yeah, I had a good laugh seeing that in the store. What a contradiction. You make a bottle of My doll harder to open, that's not safe. <laughs> you, you, you don't come between a woman and her My doll. You, it's, it's too important. See, it's bad enough we have to get a glass of water, take a pill, and wait a half hour for it to take effect. My doll, you should be able to snort. <laughs> I think I'm onto something here. <laughs> Put some of that in your Vicks inhaler. <laughs> it's a little cranky, just <clears throat> happy girl. <laughs> I feel pretty. <laughs> some of this sexual revolution stuff goes right by me. There's stuff I don't understand. What's the appeal of a menage a trois? <laughs> Me and two other people in bed? I'd be afraid they'd get together and talk about me. 